Today, Return of the Jedi turns 40, and I thought it'd be fun to take a look at all the Jedi connected video games, or most of them, in the past 40 years. I'm a huge Star Wars fan and have many Star Wars games in my collection, and I thought I would share some of these games that you may not know about that have came out over the years. So sit back, relax. Here we go. A few years back, I was able to get an arcade one-up uh, Star Wars cab, and pretty awesome. And this is Return of the Jedi. This is kind of an overlooked arcade game. It's not my favorite arcade game. Fairly difficult, three stages, three difficulty settings, and it's an isometric shooter. And you know, that, that arcade setup with that unique controller really is the way to play this, as it's pretty challenging. But there might be people watching this that's their favorite arcade game. Uh, I was never great at this game. I definitely need to play it more. Uh, as you progress, you know, you start out on Endor and then you progress to flying into the Death Star 2 and trying to take out the reactor. This is the C64 version here that I'm showing as there's many computer ports. But you know, even though it was inferior to the arcade, hey, back in the day, you were satisfied with what you could play, especially on a computer that you had in your home. And I found this version to be all right. Uh, fairly challenging as, you know, that control was really an issue with a lot of the early ports of the arcade game. Here's one I didn't never played before, and this is the Amstrad CPC version. And it is fairly clunky, but again, if you had this back in the day, you would probably be happy with it as you could play it at home and not have to spend quarters at an arcade as you know, this was a computer that was overseas and not relatively available in the US. Next, you have the Specky version. As you know, I was actually rather impressed. You know, this was uh, a, a micro computer that was very popular overseas in Europe and uh, this port even though rudimentary, I would have been very happy with as, you know, I'm really kind of delving more into ZX Spectrum library. And it's nice to see these arcade ports. They even had an Atari ST version and Amiga version. This Atari ST version was converted to the Jaguar. That's how I'm showing footage here, playing this on a game drive. And so it's just really neat to see these different arcade versions that are out there and there's more. And I just wanted to show the ones that I had available. I wanted to show the Amiga one, but wasn't able to capture footage properly. Next up is Star Wars Death Star Battle for the Atari 2600. And I love this game. I actually like it better than the arcade. And it's got two main parts where you're trying to get close to the Death Star to take it out by taking out blocks. And this is a great game for the 2600. It often gets overlooked. Then you had the 8-bit and 5200 version with better graphics. I would probably choose the 8-bit version just a little bit easier to play. But, uh, you know, this is a solid title. And one that, you know, kind of came out uh, during that mid-80s time that just often doesn't get discussed. This game is overlooked no matter what you play it on and I highly recommend it. I do like the graphics a little bit better on this version of it, but maybe you grew up with the Specky and you can play the ZX Spectrum version. Here it is. I do believe it was bundled in uh, at some point with the microcomputer. Uh, people may want to comment below. Did you, did you grow up with this version? Uh, definitely, you know, in the States, I, I don't have a lot of experience with that. I grew up and a lot in high school playing Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. I actually played the entire trilogy of this on my Super Nintendo. And while it wasn't the perfect platformer, there was some gameplay mechanics that haven't aged well. There was a lot of extras thrown in here and a lot of neat things. And, and I like the art style with the enemies and the additional things that weren't in the movie at the time in the mid 90s made the entire trilogy enjoyable to play. I enjoyed playing it, as well as many others that grew up at the same time as me. But there also was a Game Gear port, and I had a Game Gear back in the day, but I never had this as one of the games I picked up as, you know, funds were limited. And I, since I played this on the Super Nintendo, I didn't 
feel compelled to go back and play kind of a scaled down version of this but it's here and i thought they did a pretty good job with what i've played uh, with the graphics and sound and pretty nice color palette so you know maybe if you're a game gear fan you may want to check this out or play it on emulation as i found it to be fairly enjoyable they even had a game boy port of super star wars return of the jedi it is uh, super game boy compatible as you can see here with the border and uh you know it's here i don't know if it's a great game uh you know small characters you know black and white but you know uh, there might be people and game boy fans that may want to enjoy this maybe play this on their uh their analog game boy player but yeah it's here and it is a port but, you know, for me, it's all about the Super Nintendo version as it was superior to these ones. But these were portable, and you may want to go that route. Next up, you have Yoda Stories for Game Boy Color and PC. I'm showing the Game Boy Color version. And not directly tied to Return of the Jedi, there is an Endor level, I do believe Stage 9. And wanted to show it here. And this is kind of a over-the-top RPG uh, where you're gathering items and uh, finishing quests. Game Boy Advance had two games, Flight of the Falcon, and this is kind of a, a rough around the edges, kind of action arcade style game. And you mostly are flying around, taking out TIE Interceptors and the Empire. I didn't really necessarily like this one that much, and I don't know if it was because I enjoyed playing TIE Fighter so much on PC, but this other one, Apprentice of the Force, this is often overlooked as I think it's a great action platformer and it goes through the classic trilogy. I do wish there was a stage select. I don't believe there is one. And here it is uh, starting on episode four, but I really like the animations of this. And I thought they did a good job retelling kind of the classic trilogy story. And if you haven't checked this out, you may want to go back and revisit it, get it on physical, or play it in an emulation. Then you have Star Wars Arcade for the 32X, which had pretty bad voiceovers, but it was enjoyable. It did show what the 32X at least was capable of. I don't know how great the gameplay was. You can, I do believe, take out a Super Star Destroyer. That's its connection to Jedi. But, you know, I found myself enjoying this one back in the day. I did pick it up, even though the 32X in general was a letdown. I still had fun with this title. There is a two-player mode, which was kind of fun. You also had Star Wars Trilogy Arcade by Sega. That was a fantastic arcade game and played that a lot back in the day. Even though it was expensive compared to other arcade games of the time, and then you had computer games such as Star Wars Force Commander, which was based on, you know, New Hope and Return of the Jedi era levels and a lot of fun. I didn't really play this one that much back in the day, but recently found out more about it and want to go back and play it. One of my favorite Star Wars game is Star Wars Rogue Leader, in which I purchased a GameCube day one to play. Amazing game. You can replay the battle of endor and it's absolutely fantastic the graphics still hold up this many years later i absolutely love this game and highly recommend it if you haven't gone back with your gamecube play this game if you're a star wars fan as it is simply stunning now rebel strike was the follow-up it wasn't as good but there was a two-player version of rogue leader in it and there's a couple Jedi themed levels, you know, a speeder bike chase scene, always fun to play. Uh, fairly challenging game. It just wasn't well received. Uh, the chicken walker stage is pretty fun where you're taking out the empire. And uh, I, I enjoyed those levels. Not my favorite game, but well worth going back if you're a big Jedi fan. No, I didn't forget about the Lego Star Wars games on everything. You had the Lego Star Wars 2 original trilogy and the complete saga, as well as Lego Star Wars the Skywalker saga, both amazing. Only downside is you can't jump into Jedi levels. You have to play through the story. Bummer. There are other Star Wars games probably connected to Jedi. These are the main ones. What are your favorite moments or favorite games that I shared today? 
And in the comments below, let me know as I love hearing your feedback and your thoughts and especially your gaming memories. It's so much fun to read those. And I want to thank everybody for coming to my channel. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock and you take care.